Hello, welcome. My name is Julia Halbert and I work for EMV and I'm here today with Ellen Torrey and Marina Do Tremblay, who are first ever uh, emerging artists. Welcome, Ellen and Marie. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> How are you both doing this morning? I'm doing very well. Yes, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful Saturday in Kingston, Ontario. Well, thank you again so much for being here with me today. Um, to kick us off, I just want to know, how did you guys get involved with EMV? How did you um, become the emerging artists? What was that process like? You go first, Ellen. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, I, I have uh, been a longtime uh, mentee and, and collaborator of Cécile Blanc. Um, so I think she was just waiting for, for the right time. And I, I just finished my, my master's degree this week in, in early music performance. Uh, wow. thank, you. <laughs> yes. thank you so much. Um, so I think it was just a, a matter of, of timing and, uh, this is, I guess this was, this was the right time. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, think, and how about you? Yeah. For me, I, we just did, um, an album with Susie. Uh, on which Ellen is also featured, right. and um, so that that program is presented in the festival. So that was kind of my my entry into the festival, and then Susie thought about ways to like, you know, uh, take advantage of my 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 being there uh, to have me play as much as possible. I think which I'm very grateful for. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Uh, Ellen and Marie are on the new CD uh, from the court of Louis XIV to Shippagan. It's a beautiful album. I have to say, we're very excited to uh, see it this summer. Um, so I just want to know, this is a new program. This is kind of exciting. Uh, how are you guys feeling about it? Is there anything you're excited about? Um, what are your thoughts about being the first emerging artists? Go ahead, Marie. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm very excited about playing with the musicians. Um, mm in the great west um i'm very happy to like reconnect with some old friends that i met in workshops or some mentors that i've had and i'm just really excited to like get to know that scene a little bit that's the the thing that i'm the most looking forward to and just you know presenting my music and playing for everybody there and you ellen um, well, actually, this is going to be my first time in Vancouver. I've never been to Vancouver before. <laughs> um, I've been to BC, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see the city, and um, I'm very excited to collaborate with um, with my colleagues and and just make beautiful music, and to um, yeah, listen to other musicians during the festival. I'm really excited for that and, and to make connections since it'll be my first time. I'm excited to, to meet people and, and hopefully to meet some future collaborators. Yes, that's great. Yeah, no, the Bach Festival is just a wonderful place for people to meet and you will both love BC, I'm sure. It's quite beautiful, lots of ocean. <laughs> um, so I have kind of a slightly different question. I know that you are both very talented visual artists as well in your own right. Um, if anyone's interested, we have their art up on the website to take a look at. Um, and I'm just wondering, has there been any connection for you um, between the visual and performing arts? Do you think that one or the other has helped you with the other? Um, what's kind of the balance of those two things for you? I would say definitely for me, uh, there's a huge um, uh, relationship between between my music making and my art making. Um, when I'm learning pieces, I love to like make art while I'm learning because I feel like it facilitates like just I don't know getting it in the body somehow. And um, my most recent series of of um, pen and paper drawings are inspired by the musical modes. So each each um, drawing is like a world um, like inspired by. Uh, like the characteristics of a musical mode. So a lot of my a lot of my drawings are inspired by music, and I've I've done a couple of Guidonian hands, which is um, like a solfege learning system from medieval times. Um, so oh. I yeah, heavily inspired by the music I make for sure. Wow, That's so what cool. an interesting concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, Marie. And for me, I think like in all forms of art you know because I write also a little bit I feel like it's always the same need to like share 
something and it, it can be an experience or a memory or a story you know it, it's really like and it's to express yourself in a way that's really honest you know and very yourself and I feel like why music was like not enough for me to do that is because like there's an aspect of music that's so ephemeral you know you're mm -hmm. always in the now and 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 then it's gone you know you work so much towards a certain concert a certain goal and then you do it and then you know you can mess up and that was your chance and then it's gone or you you do a fantastic job and the same happens it's just gone you know mm -hmm. and i feel like with art like with drawing the the possibility to work on it until you're fully satisfied or like at a level of satisfaction that is you know enough for you and then you have it forever and it's not going to change or be gone so that's like really therapeutic for me oh wow that's that's so interesting yeah I've never thought about the longevity of the art that's such an interesting mm -hmm. point of view um amazing so my next question uh, is what got you guys into early music and with that what does it mean to you why do you do early music specifically I know you both do more than that but what is it about early music that's so special it's such a niche type of music um, how did you get in that world shall I go first now go for it <laughs> okay so for me um uh, I answered that question so many times already but every time it's hard um mm. I was my, my bachelor at McGill in uh, mm -hmm. modern modern violin, if you can call it that. And I was right. feeling a little bit dissatisfied with, you know, the whole shebang. And it's not because it wasn't like a good place. It's just that it wasn't really the place for me, I felt like. And I had gotten a lot into other things like, like drawing. And I, I had done a lot of um, Chinese language studies at university as well that I was thinking of redirecting myself into something like this. And then, um, uh, Betsy Macmillan uh, at school, who was at the time teaching uh, chamber music, early music, and uh, Viola da Gamba asked me to join the Baroque Orchestra because my locker happened to be right next to the rehearsal uh, room. <laughs> and I did it for my last semester and I just loved it, but I couldn't play a single note the whole semester because I have perfect pitch and the tuning is different. So I was really oh. messed up. Yeah, and it took me like three years to fully be able to actually play at 415, which is the A that we use for tuning and early music standard, you know. Uh, but I love the way that it was really free. Um, there's so much on the part that is left for you to make up, you know, and interpret. Like the, the composer doesn't feel the need or like it was in the tradition then to write down everything and to make to decide on everything in advance you know a lot of it is left up to your artistry as a performer and that's what i like the most that's beautiful you ellen um yeah i guess i guess it started because i've always i've always been part of choirs that um had a particular focus on early music i grew up singing in the anglican church and so there was a lot of like renaissance polyphony that that is sung there um, and then uh, when I went to school for my undergrad, um, I, I studied music therapy, but I joined um, the chapel choir where the director also um, has had a lot of experience in early music. And um, I think as my voice developed, I was just singing so much of that rep that um, my voice kind of grew into it almost. And mm. uh, towards the end of my degree, I really felt like this vocation to perform and um, I, I was, I was in Nova Scotia where Susie often tours and I reached out to her, uh, by email for a lesson and, and we had this lesson and I just left feeling so inspired. And, uh, I moved to Montreal, uh, after my degree, uh, with no plan really, except to just like play music. Um, and so I, I play a lot of singer songwriter music, a lot of folk music, and I've always been, um, I've always valued very much the communal aspect of that music and, and the way that it facilitates um, community participation and, and making music together. And I, I feel that, um, like Marie said, because there's so much room for interpretation, you, it really does facilitate this, this communication and this sense of community with your collaborators. And so it was that, that, um, that aspect of it um, between those two genres that really kind of like drew me over to it as well. 
Um, so, so that's, that's, that's sort of the story. I, I developed this, this kinship with Susie and, and I studied under her for two years and, and developed my, my love and my knowledge of the repertoire. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's the story. I suppose. <laughs> wow. Yes. I, I guess a big thing about early music is just the freedom to express yourself. And like you said, build community. I think um, in any environment, that's the thing we want most, right? Is to be able to create and find our community. So that's just a beautiful, beautiful reason and story. Thank you for sharing. Um, kind of on another vein, uh, you guys have an excellent concert coming up this summer. Uh, it's called uh, The Next Generation Baroque Innovations. Uh, what a fun title. Um, so I just want to know a little bit about the program and why you chose the certain pieces um, and just a little bit about what the concert is about. What's the music about? I picked um, a little bit of everything, I feel like. Uh, I wanted to present something that I played on my first ever album that's called La Peste, which translates as The Plague, um, which came out uh, during the pandemic, but was thought off before the pandemic. Um, so there's a piece of that, and then there's a, a short prelude for um, solo violin by an obscure Portuguese uh, Baroque composer whose name is Pedro Lopez Nogueira. Um, mm -hmm. That's from my second album, which was for solo violin, that came out uh, last October. And then I will play a piece. I think I'm going to make a little program change because I had two pieces for the plague, but I think I'm going to play a piece from the upcoming album that we're recording uh, in a week, uh, which is going to oh, wow. be a, a Marini Sonata. And that's going to be fun. And we're playing with uh, uh, Sylvain Bergeron. We're very, very... <laughs> lucky wow. to have him with us he's a fantastic musician and I'm really looking forward to working with him and getting inspired by his wizardry what about you Ellen? And Helen what about you uh so yeah I'm I'm of course so excited um to present this program and um and I I love this idea of of baroque innovations because I think that every generation of new performers um, is, is called to, to innovate the music in some way, especially because we're performing this, this early, this ancient music. Um, and and uh, I think our, our work is, is to find something new to say within it. Um, so, so the pieces that I picked are, are pieces that I just really love to sing so much. Um, I'm singing some, some Purcell and, and we're performing some Barbara Strozzi as well, um, who were both, of course, innovators um, in their own right um, in their generations. Um, I really like uh, this quote that I found as I was as I was searching for material for the program notes um, by Willa Cather, an author who, who says, there are only two or three human stories and they go on repeating themselves as fiercely as if they had never happened before. And I think that's, that's so true of, of music and, and the, um, the emotional content of music too. It, it tells this extremely relatable universal story of love or loss or pain um, but it's but it's up to us to to innovate that with our own experiences our own personal um, our own personal experiences and so I'm I'm just excited to um, like embody uh, stories in, in the way that I know how and and to collaborate of course with Marie who's absolutely incredible who I've admired for years and Sylvain who's obviously mm -hmm. a legend so uh, yeah that's 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 what it's going to be about for me. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, that doesn't sound. <laughs> wow, that doesn't sound like a concert you want to be at. I don't know what does. That I'm moved. I'm more excited than I have been, and I've been, you know, your number one uh, supporter here. <laughs> so that's just beautiful. Um, speaking of working together, how did you two um, come to work together? Is it just because of this project, or have you known each other for a long time? How do you know each other? We kind of miss each other at school, eh? Yeah, mm. yeah, we were, you graduated the year the year that I moved here, I think. But yeah. I actually I actually met you the evening that I received a beautiful tattoo from you because Marie also does incredible hand hand poked um, tattoo work. <laughs> so that's how we met. <laughs> yeah. What what kind of tattoo did uh, did uh, she give you? 
It's actually a portrait of Hildegard von Bingen. I can show it to you. Amazing. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. Yes, wow, she's very so talented. Cool. But we have a lot of people. I mean, it's a small scene. So I think we we have a lot of mutual friends and and we ended up in the in the same circles because of that. Oh yeah. Um, so cool. What a fun little story. Tattoo pulled you together. That's so neat. <laughs> um, so this is your first time uh, in the Bach Festival in Vancouver. Um, what is something that you guys are hoping to learn or share in the Bach Festival? You know, what I, I guess this is a two part question. So what do you want to learn? And then also, what do you want to say? Like, you know, you have this opportunity to have this platform. Um, we'll be chatting with you uh, at the concerts. What do you want to share? You go first, Ellen. I okay. have to think about that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Me too, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I'm definitely, I mean, I'm, I'm quite new to the scene. I'm, I just graduated um, school and um, I feel that I have a lot to learn from my colleagues. So I'm mostly just excited to, to, to see them in action and to learn more about um, how to, how to easily facilitate collaborative sessions with performers. I think I'm really excited to, to see that um, happen around me. Um, second part. Oh yeah. Uh, I, um, because, because I am interested in other music genres and, and I play a lot of, of singer songwriter music and, um, and have mentioned my, my love for the collaborative aspect of, of both genres. Um, I think that, Part of the beauty of that is that um, it allows us to facilitate community storytelling. And I think that's something that maybe sometimes gets missed when we talk about reconstructing music from the treatises, which are, of course, incredibly important and helpful for us to understand how to perform this music as, as um, you know, historians, really, and as, as archaeologists of the genre. Um, but I do think it's important to acknowledge that um, there may have been other communities who performed this music at the same time, who um, maybe didn't have the means or the desire to be writing down what they were doing. And I think my part of my work and part of what I have to say is that um, I think we should be making space for that. And I think um, I think. Part of that for me is self accompaniment, which is, of course, an aspect of the singer songwriter style um, that I've started to learn um, for early music on Baroque guitar. Um, and so I think taking um, collaborative and um, uh, aspects that that open up the possibility of different socioeconomic communities performing this music um, is really important for me to sort of bring forward um, into the sort of next generation of of, of performers. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, it does. And it's powerful. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> wow. What a, what a purpose. That's incredible. And you, Marie? Uh, well, my answer will not be nearly as interesting as yours, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will. <laughs> um, for me, well, I haven't done a lot of traveling for music yet. Hopefully mm. we'll do more and more and um, over the course of my career, but, um, I play a lot in Montreal, obviously, because I've been graduated for uh, three years now, and uh, you know this is how I how I make my living. Um, mm -hmm. But I've never played professionally outside of this city or outside of this province, so I'm really looking forward to like seeing like how it's done elsewhere. Like it almost feels like I'm gonna go to another planet. I'm hoping to you know connect with the public and connect with the musicians there and learn from them you can always learn from from your colleagues you know it, the learning just never stops and uh, in music like in life you know in life you're just an accumulation of the things that you picked out from the people you liked and the things that you didn't like and other people that you told yourself i'm never going to do that you know and then in music it's just the same so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to expanding my, my uh, library of, of, of things I can steal from people. No, that's, that's excellent. That's excellent. No, truly, we are always learning and seeing what's best in others and 
stealing. Um, I know that I'm constantly doing that as well in what I do. <laughs> so yeah. great point. Uh, that's, ex that's exciting. This is going to be a wonderful, wonderful new uh, series for us this summer. Um, total different uh, lane here. I was wondering, do you have any funny or maybe not funny, but just sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? performance horror stories or times that were <laughs> that were oh no and you know d disaster I'm sure you're both nodding <laughs> this one's going to be easy <laughs> maybe uh maybe uh, Ellen can start this one sure yeah I mean there's there's a big one that always always comes to mind first um <laughs> I uh when I was in my undergrad at Acadia um we, the choir at the chapel, um, was to sing for a service um, that also happened to meet my colleagues' uh, jury on organ. So, so the head of the School of Music was there and um, all my professors. And we were going to sing two anthems. Uh, one was Lord of the Dance, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with. It's a, like very uh, upbeat, um, jovial <laughs> type of piece. And then we were going right. to sing some very somber, like talus, low key, minor thing. And um, I was supposed to start Lord of the Dance as a solo a cappella. So, so we're sitting in the service and it comes time to sing and we all get up and the director gives a note and goes to bring us in. And I just start singing Lord of the Dance with as much energy and confidence and happiness as I can muster. I'm really going for it singing and I look up and everyone is just staring at me like this oh. and I'm like, what's wrong and I realize that it's supposed to be the other anthem and I've I've started Lord of the Dance in the wrong key and not even supposed to be singing it <laughs> and thank you for Lord of the I danced in the morning when the sky turned black and uh I instead of just finishing strong which I really should have done and I've thought about it a lot since I just kind of <laughs> slowly petered out and then giggled and then there was like this awful silence. And then we just launched into the correct piece after that. So that oh. is a story that is still told um, to undergrads, incoming undergrads, as like a funny anecdote at the on the first day of the year. So it's my that's my legacy, unfortunately. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! Well, it's human, right? You know, it's kind of kind of uh, neat in a way, right? You know, we all make mistakes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that would be terrible. I can't imagine how you felt. Marie, how about you? Um, I mean, I have I have so many. Like <laughs> uh most recently I had like a heat stroke on stage or something and I like blanked for like one second. And then when I came back to my senses, I was completely lost and it was like a, a shotgun, so it's a repeating pattern. And if you don't right. remember which pattern you're on, you're screwed. Like you will never find it again because it, it could be just any bar, you know? Mm. So that was terrifying. We had to like stop everything and like pick a bar and like on stage. And I cried so much afterwards. I thought my career was over. But the most horrifying one was like maybe in 2018. You know, I just, I'm just starting to be a, a, a pro, you know, doing these gigs and we are playing um, Mozart's Re Requiem mm. uh, in, a, in a city outside of Montreal. So it's like two hours to drive there. And then I arrive at the dress rehearsal. I open my violin case and there's no violin in, in the case. And I realized I left my violin on a harpsichord at school. And like when I was practicing, I went to the bathroom, put my violin on the harpsichord and then I came back and then I packed my case and I left, but I forgot to put the violin in the case. I have attention deficit. So like this kind of stuff happens a lot, but this is like extreme. And I was just devastated because like, who is like, how am I going to play this concert? And then in the end, my parents had to drive to the school, get one of the students to like, take the card to go inside the practice room, find my violin and like carry it with no case, like outside of the school. And there was the, the Santa Claus parade or whatever, like <laughs> so the streets were blocked. And then my parents like rushed to the other city and arrived like five minutes before the concert. And I was saved, but just so embarrassing and horrifying, you know? Wow. 
the fear of not getting it must have just been so so stressful yeah wow. I feel like I shouldn't oh even have talked about this like I'm getting shivers <laughs> like yeah oh no that's not the intention of this <laughs> yeah oh my I will god never well, thank do that again, that's for sure <laughs> yeah i guess we've learned now you know oh, we yeah. get so much from these moments for sure oh yeah wow i uh i understand i used to be a theater performer and i also understand the feeling <laughs> quite a bit of a uh, fear in those moments well thank you both so much for being here today and doing this uh wonderful interview it was a great discussion um you can all see Marie and Ellen this summer in our Bach Festival in their concerts uh, from the court of Louis XIV to Shippagan and uh, the next generation Baroque innovations, which you can check out on our website at earlymusic.bc.ca. Um, is there anything that uh, people, anywhere that people can go and check out what you both do? Any place we can direct them to learn more about you? Well, I have my website that I, I try to keep up to date as much as possible. Um, All right. So it's just my name, marinadotremblay.com. And I have, uh, I have Instagram, uh, both for myself as a solo violinist and uh, for my group. So Les Barocuda is my, my, my group. And uh, my, my Instagram is Baroque Maggot. <laughs> yes, I'm I love that handle. <laughs> I'm also present on, on Facebook uh, under my own name, uh, Baroque Violinist. I have a page. And on YouTube, there's a tons of tons of videos from my group. Yes. Okay, we'll have to all check those out. And Ellen? Uh, as an aside, I personally endorse Marie's YouTube and all the Barracuda's videos. They are so good. Uh, highly yes. recommend that uh, everyone check them out. Um, yeah, you can find me at my website, which I also attempt to update regularly. Um, so that's just ellentory.com. Um, and I, yeah, I'm also present on Facebook, Ellen Tory Music. Um, and my Instagram right now, the handle is nomadic pastoralism, which I'm not in love with. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. But uh, that's uh, you the website. I gets in there. Yeah, nomadic maggot. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> That'll be it. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good title. Then, you, then you can be really connected in this uh, series this summer. <laughs> sense All right. Well, exactly. Thank you again, both, so much, and uh, we will see you this summer for the festival. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks a lot.